Hello, it's Tuesday again, and we are at a really exciting stage with the telephone exchange. I want to show you what's been going on. Just a moment, please. Your call is being diverted. For the first time since we moved all this stuff around, you can actually call any telephone through the museum from any other telephone. That may not sound like a big deal, but it was a huge amount of work to get there. As is always the way around here, things move on pretty fast, and so we've just uh, we've just added these on uh, for the moment, be into the uh, phone book. I guess it's a phone book, it's a pretty light phone book. Uh, let's call the uh, other Ultratech Minicom phone. So, 5805. 58. That takes us over to this rack now, which uh, is actually connected to the phones on the other side of the museum and if with any luck, <laughs> there we go. Hello. It's just me today, there's no Johnny behind the camera so sorry if the audio is a bit rubbish. You may be able to hear though, look my no computer, uh, practicing for his European tour in the background. So each telephone that would normally you know, be in a house uh, has a pair of wires going to it and for each one of these racks here, these A racks within our UAX13 system, we have 20 pairs of wire connected in to each rack. And those pairs go up on the cables and come out to junction boxes spread through the museum. There's one up there. Um, and then from that point, you know, they get split out and go to the individual telephones, okay? That pair of wires that go into your telephone are just an electrical loop between you and the telephone that you're calling. And of course, to reach that other phone, the pair of connections need to get connected through this exchange, step by step until they reach the final selectors, which sends that connection out to the phone that you're calling. You use the same pair of wires if you are calling someone else or someone is calling you and the switching happens uh, within these selector switches so that uh, you can't have an outgoing and an incoming call at the same time. That's why you get that busy tone. So when I lift up this handset, there is a switch underneath it. Can you see it here? That connects those two wires together and tells the exchange that someone's picked up their phone and then it needs to find that phone. That's the job of these line finders here. And all of the phones are connected around this bank. This is the pairs of wire coming in. Once one of these line finders has actually connected to your line, that pair of connections is then passed to one of the group selectors and you can begin to dial and find the telephone that you wanna call. So on these two racks here, we have all of the lines going out to the telephone junction boxes connected into the line finder so they can call into the exchange. But until today, we had not connected all of those final selectors. So we didn't have the ability to call out to all of those phones. Now, normally these connections are made through the intermediate distribution frame, uh, but our one on this uh, C rack, here is a bit knackered, uh, so we can't actually use that. So we've had to do it a little bit different. This big mass of wires here is the back of the line finder banks. And you'll see that it goes up here, gets connected across and parted out, goes through uh, all the wires up here and connects onto the terminal posts. These ones are wire wrap, uh, but we do have some solder uh, tag terminals on the rack over there. So by connecting those pairs of wires that come from our telephone onto the same terminal posts as the wires that are connecting down to the banks of the line finders, effectively each one of these pads is a separate telephone that can connect into the exchange. And if we want to do the same to the banks behind the final selectors here, uh, so that each pad is connecting out of the exchange to an individual telephone, all we need to do is connect those down to those same terminals that are connected to the line finder banks. So in and out is using the same pair of wires. This set of connections here is what's coming out from the banks of the final selectors up there. So you can see the wire wrap terminals that are connecting both the banks of the final selectors and all these wires going out at the top. And we've brought that out 
down a 20 pair cable. So this is a cable that contains 20 pairs of wire. So uh, 40 overall and it comes all the way down here and then back along behind the uh, line finder uh, terminal pins and all the way to uh, levels three and four here where it's brought out and connected down to the pins. Well all that's simple enough now it starts to get a little bit more complicated so if you look on the banks right there are two sets of ten levels and on each one of these levels there are contacts on the top of it and there are also contacts on the bottom and there are two sets of wipers that move in unison up and across these bank terminals. So for each position you can have four contacts, right? So we got the plus and the minus, that is the pair of wires that go out to your telephone that form the audio loop. There are also two other connections that are just within the exchange. We have a private wire and a meter wire. The private wire, what it does is it kind of tells all of the exchange equipment what's going on, what to do, okay? And the meter wire operates the uh, the meters, and those are important, especially to the telephone company, because that tells them how much to charge the customer. Very important wire. So around here at the back, we're not only connecting the audio pair uh, from the line finders here up to the final selectors, we're also connecting the P wire and the meter. Uh, so that means that our 20 pair uh, cable is not going to have enough cables to do the entire 20 lines because you need four for each. So I'm going to have to add another cable and that gives me a good opportunity to show you how to do that. Right, so first things first, I'm not an expert, I'm just a enthusiast, so uh, go easy on me, but I'm always uh, happy to have uh, helpful comments down below. Uh, first step is to connect the wires to the uh, wire cable. There. That will easily take your finger off, so <laughs> you've got to be careful with that. So now what I need to do is strip the sheath off of the cable. We do that with a knife, so you score around the edge of it. Be careful not to go all the way through, because you don't want to nick the cables by accident. And then you can just break it open like that, and you're in. And there's a the last little bit around the back to get the knife. Just gently score it there and you can break it open. Now the whole length of this is going to be a bit too much to pull off with all the friction so I'm just going to do that again halfway down and we'll pull the sheath off in two halves. Still a bit stiff and then the next part, there we go. Wah, there we go. So it's got this uh, plastic cover on there, you can just take your snips, snip it slightly in one side and then it'll just uh, come off. Ouch. <laughs> oh yeah, I just caught myself. <laughs> you move yourself too quickly, you catch yourself on these uh, pins here. It's got a couple of little threads there that you can clip off. Disentangle these orangey bits here. Yeah. So this particular 20 pair wire also has an earth cable. We're not going to need that, so we're going to clip that off, being very careful not to accidentally clip some of the cables that we do want. And then the last job is to just tie these little orange plastic bits around, um, just to tidy things up. There we are, that's the tidied up cable. Now we're gonna start cable lacing it. This is my favorite part. So this stuff is waxed twine. It's twine that's got a load of wax on it and it basically uh, sticks to itself. Uh, and this is the way that they used to lace up and tidy cables before you had things like, I don't know, zip ties or whatever. And in my opinion, it looks and actually functions a lot better. It's really good functionally because um, the twine is soft so it doesn't dig into the cables uh, and it's really easy to remove and then put back on. Uh, we're just gonna uh, unfurl a load of it, I reckon, I don't know, about two and a bit uh, arm lengths, something like that, and that'll give us a little bit of extra to tie down all the cables to the back of the rack. Then what you can do is just uh, wrap it around your fingers like so give it a little bit of a twist, and then there you go, kind of self-contained and tidy, ready for you to start lacing. 
Shout out to Cliff for showing me that trick. We've got the cable, I've just hooked it over the back of this terminal block. It's much easier to start cable lacing it before you start wrapping all the wires and stuff in. Now I was showing how to do this, but I don't have the best memory, so this is no reflection upon the skill of my uh, tutors. By the sounds of it, everybody did it differently. There was all sorts of different standards as well, used by different organisations. NASA had their own standard, Bell Telephones had their own standard. Uh, so I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it the uh, this music museum is not obsolete standard. <laughs> I was not in the Boy Scouts so uh, <laughs> I can't really tell you with much authority what a clove hitch is but I'm going to attempt to do one now. Please correct me if I'm wrong. i uh, try and get my hands out the way as well so you can see what I'm doing. Um, you can then bring it along here uh, all the way up. There you are. That's pretty good. And then we will secure it with an overhand knot like that. Bring it down. Make sure it's tight. Let's cut this little bit off so it's tidy. Now we can start with the actual lacing. Right, so here is our bundle of waxed twine and I've left ourselves a little bit to play with here. What we're gonna do is grab it like this and then what I'm gonna do is turn my hand over so that there is a loop. Then I'm gonna pass this bundle over the wire under and through that loop that we've created. It's important to do that the same way, going over and under the wire every time, so it's a regular pattern, otherwise it's gonna look a bit naff. Uh, give this a little bit of a twist again so it all stays together. And then, the skillful bit, you gotta just feel this out and uh, get this to tighten up at a regular interval. That's the, that's the trick to this to make it look good. I'm gonna go for about an inch every time. That will match uh, some of the other cable lacing that was already done on this exchange so it looks all neat and regular. There we are and we can just pull that tight and then do it again and that will secure it in place. So at a certain point we're going to want to break out these cables so they can come through the holes here and wrap onto the terminal posts. That means that we've got to understand how these terminal blocks are arranged. Now I'm going to admit to something, I made a mistake earlier in the video, we're not actually connecting the meter wire, I remembered now. Uh, we're just connecting P1, which is the private wire, minus and plus. So that is three wires per line. So the whole row here is all plus, the whole row here is all minus, and you'll see there's a group of four pins down here, and that's labeled even, and this one's odd. And that's just the position of the pads within the bank of the final selector. So up the top, you got zero, zero. So that is the zero position pad on level zero and that's these four pins here which is an even number yeah so all of the four pins the groups of four pins vertically going across here they're all even and down below we've got zero one so that's level zero position rotary round one okay so <laughs> zero 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 one zero two zero three and on and on and on so if you remember that correlates to the levels and the rotary pad positions on these banks and here's a diagram of the numbering of a two mation selector bank contacts you see uh, level zero zero is actually at the end of the rotary travel not at the beginning uh, so you've got to remember that and confusingly if we go around the back of the rack again the way that the numbering is done on the lower uh, line finder terminal block is different so we've got the different levels here and it goes one odds you see one is odd two three four five six seven eight nine and then zero at the end whereas zero up here is the first set of contacts just to confuse you what we've decided to do just for simplicity of wiring is to put the zero zero uh, position into the uh, one position and we're wiring from the final selectors uh, levels zero and one into the line finder levels three 
and four, just to add a bit of variety because we don't have that many telephone lines coming into these racks, makes it a little bit more interesting that way. Another good reason to use levels three and four on the line finders is that they are relatively low down levels, so it takes less time to switch up to them, which is good because the line finders need to work really, really fast, and so they are more likely to work if we use the lower levels. Um, and using level zero, which is the top level on the final selectors, just means that we can get a few more clicks out of it and sound cool sounds, so and that's a perfectly good valid reason if you ask me. I do know that um, some of the levels are traditionally uh, reserved for certain things like payphones or junctions, um, and I'm pretty sure we looked into that, um, I think we tried to be faithful to that, um, but uh, I can't quite remember so let me know Let me know what the, what they're meant to be. Right, well that's the gist of it at least, I hope uh, I'm making some sense, you're following along. Let's talk now about the colour coding on these 20 pairs of wire. So this is one of the pairs of wire. And you see that one wire is predominantly blue with little white bits, and the other uh, wire in the pair is predominantly white with little blue bits. So they match up as a pair, you see that? And there's an order to these colors. So after white, blue, blue, white, there is uh, white, orange uh, and then white green white brown white slate and uh, very much white slate not white gray but you'll notice that the first five pairs of wire all have white as a common color so they're all part of the white group and five pairs of wire in there if we have four groups then we've got 20 pairs overall and there's an order to those groups there's a couple of ways to remember it there's loads of different rhymes and stuff i think uh was it bell operators uh, give better service so that's the uh, blue orange green brown slate and then for the groups uh why run backwards you varmint so uh that is uh white uh red Black, uh, yellow, uh, violet. <sighs> okay, so with uh, 20 pairs of wire, we want to clear off 20 uh, sets of terminals on the back here. So that's going to be spread over two levels because there's 10 rotary positions in each level, remember. So we got naught, naught, and then... Uh, three eight so that's the eighth position on the third level so now in between here we've got to find our way up to uh one uh nine because that's the order of this particular terminal block you can see i've made a start with the first uh 20 pairs of wire and now we're going to continue yeah. it on so i brought the first set of wires out of here ready to get wrapped let me show you how to do that there's lots of different ways to do wire wrapping. The fastest, apparently, is with a gun like this. Actually, an electric one. This is just a hand-operated one. But we are going to use a fancy old tool from the 1960s. This nifty thing. And in true GPO style, it's got a clunky name. It's the Wrapper Wire Terminating Number 1. So you can see in the front of this, there's a little hole where the actual terminal post goes in. And there's a little notch and a blade that you thread the wire through. And that cuts the sheath, but not the actual wire. And you run it through this little holder under a clip, and it has a little cutter here that I'll show you in a second, so you can trim the wire off. And then as it winds onto the terminal post, it actually pushes the sheath back and strips the wire as it wraps it onto the terminal post. Very, very clever. So I've wrapped it around the post once and I can thread it through those little knives there, make sure it's cut, and then through here, line this up, cut it off, push it on in, and then I can start spinning it around. And we're good to go. Here we are. 
very important to remember to cut off that bit of wire there uh, because if you don't it's going to have too much friction uh, between the wire and the sheath as you try to wrap it on and it's likely going to snap the wire and then you're into a world of pain because you've got to start joining extra bits of wire on and stuff and it ain't fun trust me trust me <laughs> I've done it and after doing a load of these you start dreaming of wires so many wires so many wires and this is just a small rural exchange oh my goodness me that's it we've brought out two levels worth here and I'm just tidying up around the back uh, break out the cables like that and tie them up nicely with some wax twine that's called carroting because uh, as the cables uh, branch off the main bit tapers down like a carrot there's a little example there are extra wires that we're not using at this stage we'll probably use them later so all I'm gonna do is just wrap them around the end of my screwdriver to get them nice and tidy and then we can just tuck them down behind the shelf Tidied that up a bit. Now I've just got to do all of that again down here. Cool, so now we have the ability to connect 20 phones into this rack. And uh, we've got two other racks as well that are wired up, so that is 60 phones. Uh, we don't have 60 phones around the museum but we have some pretty interesting ideas of other things we can also connect through the exchange so watch this space. I hope you enjoyed today's video and that's enlightened you a bit of what we get up to spending hours behind this rack. Uh, if you want to support what we do um, because it does take a lot of time and effort uh, there's a Patreon link down below in the description. Also leave us a comment, we always want to hear uh, what you think and your stories and stuff and tell me how I can do this stuff better, I'm always trying to learn. Also one of the sample packs that we've released is of this telephone exchange, all of the clicks and noises and stuff, so you can use all those sounds in your music and be sure to send us a link, I want to hear it. But for now I will see you next Tuesday.